Hi, my name is Rick Olderman. I'm a physical therapist and Hannah Semantics practitioner. And I wanted to talk to you about shoulder pain. What's going on here? How do I fix my shoulder or arm pain? Many of you probably have gone through programs of rotator cuff strengthening and done painful trigger point work. You may have tried ultrasound, e stim, ice heat, all of these kinds of things and many other types of treatment. And still you're left with chronic shoulder or elbow pain or wrist pain. So what's going on here? How can we solve this? What are you missing? Well, I think this program will have some answers for you. The focus primarily with shoulder pain especially is that we have to understand that the shoulder blade here or the scapula is the foundation of movement for all arm movements. So you can see how large it is. It's a big broad bony uh, structure here similar to one of our, our pelvic bones. And so it's made for heavy lifting and moving. And what happens is that oftentimes this isn't working well, which then leads to stress at the shoulder joint and even in the elbow. One of the primary movers of the shoulder blade is the trapezius muscle, and you will be testing that uh, in your testing lesson in this program to find out whether that is working well for you. And then you'll, you'll also be given strengthening exercises for this if uh, indeed it is weak. So there are rules about how the shoulder blade should be resting and moving. Here are a few of them. For instance, this shoulder blade, the outer acromion here, should be resting at about thoracic level two. The shoulder blade should be resting three inches from the spine. And this is when the arm is at rest. If we find problems with how the shoulder blade is resting, well then for sure we're gonna find problems with how it's moving. And that's where most people are having their pain. The whole purpose of the shoulder blade here, because it's such a large bone, it's supposed to be the foundation of arm movement. It is the mover and shaker to allow the arm to lift overhead. And if it's not moving and, and uh, adhering to the few uh, rules that, are set up, that, it, that it's supposed to follow, then we end up with the chronic stress of the shoulder joint and elbow joint at the neck and head and all sorts of things. So one of the rules here is that this outer part of the sacromium should be, rest, should be elevating up to about C7 here. The shoulder blade should be rotating 60 degrees and this bottom quarter called the inferior angle should be coming up to about the midpoint of your uh, thorax here, right about where the seam of your shirt is on, on you. And you'll be going through, uh, in the testing section, you'll be seeing how to measure all of these things. Now another thing that's contributing to shoulder problems is posture. And both of these women have good posture. It's not that, and you might say, see this one and say, oh, she has horrible posture. Well, her posture is actually perfect for the shape of her spine. So there is a lot of variety in terms of how everyone is built. This woman is built like this, which creates certain problems for the shoulder and elbow and neck. And this woman is built like this, which creates different types of problems. So the shape of your spine has a lot to do with what's going on at the shoulder. There's a condition called anterior humeral glide syndrome, and this picture kind of shows what's going on here. This is a normal shoulder. The, this is the front of the humeral head, and it should be resting pretty close to where the acromion is here, and resting you know, fairly symmetrically in the shoulder socket. But on her other side, which is, happens to be her painful side, the humeral head is resting far too forward and the back of the shoulder is far too close to the acromion and the, this is creating a unique set of problems for her. Now if you have chronic elbow pain like tennis elbow or golfer's elbow, in my experience what's going on is that th these deeper rotator muscles of the forearm are usually excessively tight or contracted or there's something going on here and I'll show you exercises uh, how to fix that and also in the testing section you'll be testing to see whether your rotators are, are proper length too. So you'll notice that these rotator muscles insert at the elbow at just about where you would have golfer's elbow and here just about where you'd have tennis elbow. It turns out that in, in my uh, experience when these uh, muscles are dysfunctional they create extra stress for the forearm extensors and the flexors and that's what's creating the tennis elbow. So solving this is a pretty important uh, and big deal for those of you with chronic elbow issues. Well, where do I go from here? Well, you can go to fixingyou.com and visit the top tests and tips and get started on understanding and fixing your pain. You can also go to fixingyou.com and join the interactive online clinic and finally solve all of these systemic issues that are creating your pain. Regardless, 
I want to thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you at the Fixing You Interactive Online Clinic. Thanks.